cast of characters has been much the same for five games, but the desperation has continued to mount. It was indeed a desperate Boston team that forced the series to game six. And now the drama is about to unfold again. Which team will prove to be the most desperate tonight? The Sabres of Buffalo or the Bruins of Boston? Boston was a desperate hockey club, and I know we use that word all the time in the playoffs, but it was the truth. Uh, they were more desperate than Buffalo, and it, it showed in that hockey game. And a couple of other areas Buffalo must improve upon. We've been talking all series about the neutral zone and at the Boston blue line. Buffalo must not turn the puck over in those areas. They did on Sunday, and it cost them the game. So they have to make good shoot-ins, get the puck deep, and able to establish a four-check. And tonight, they must play with desperateness. They must approach game six here in this building as though it is game seven. Yeah, things didn't exactly go the way we wanted uh, the other night. Um, but there's no question there's a sense of ur urgency, and we've got to be a desperate hockey team tonight. I mean, we've got to finish this off tonight, and that's that's going to be our main goal. It, it's going to be tough. I mean, they're not going to roll over. You, you know, they got a lot of character over there, and they have a good, solid team. So we have a lot of respect for them, and, uh, you know, we're just going to come out and try and, uh, play Buffalo Sabre hockey. Dominic Hashik sat out the third period in Sunday's game. Dwayne Rolison came on in his stead, but Dominic will be back in there tonight. Yes, he will. I, I thought he was just outstanding in the first period in Boston. Uh, he's 16 shots on goal, but he wasn't very good in the second period, and he said, I did not have a good game. Uh, his uh, save percentage is still the best in the playoffs. There was much speculation down here in this building this morning about the health of Dominic Hashik. Now, he did practice yesterday this is at 11:21 uh, in the morning uh, we did not practice with the team just a couple of players out on the ice dominic took some shots and then went through uh, some exercises moving side to side moving out to cut down the angle i talked to uh, lindy rupp this morning he said dominic's fine and he's ready to go well it's a testament to his greatness but certainly raymond bork has just been pounded in this series i have never seen ray bork hit as much as he has been hit in this series. Uh, it's as though the number 77 uh, means a target. And Buffalo have really gone after the captain of the Boston Bruins. Uh, some legal checks, some not so legal. Uh, Michael Pekka on Sunday with a thundering check on Ray Bork just knocked him hard down to the ice. Ray Bork is their best hockey player, their best defenseman. He plays over 30 minutes a game. It's a good game plan. It must continue tonight if Buffalo is to be successful. Well, let's swing down now and find out what Lindy Ruff has to offer us. He's with Danny Gare. Danny. Lindy, you had a chance to eliminate the Bruins in Game 5. Here you're back home in Game 6. What did your team have to do to finish them off tonight? I think uh, you know, get, get the emotion behind their game right off the bat. Uh, get the puck in deep and establish a, a real good fortune. I think that's important for us. Any lineup changes tonight? We've got Sylvester going in tonight, uh, you know, looking for a little more offense. Good luck. Thanks, Danny. 18 times in their history, the Boston Bruins have gone into a playoff series down three games to two. 16 of those occasions, they have been eliminated. goaltenders tonight as it has been throughout the entire series Lord Byron Defoe for the Boston Bruins who has performed exceptionally well by and large over the series for the Bruins and Dominic Cashin he got to rest one period in Boston on Sunday afternoon period number three but he bounces right back and is between the pipes again tonight for the Buffalo Sabres the officials tonight, referees, Terry Gregson, Bill McCurry, Linesman, Mike Civic, and Brad Lazarowicz. 
And the standby linesman is Scott Driscoll this evening. Terry Gregson is trying to handle the playoff duties, or the faceoff duties, I should say, between Holzinger and Taylor as soon as they get set to go at center ice. And boy, I can tell you one thing. This sold-out Marine Midland Arena is ready to go. Uh, they were loud. Uh, about 10 minutes ago they started, and they're really warmed up now. As here we go with the opening faceoff. Mark tipped as far as center ice, it's scooped ahead, knocked down right along the blue line. Bruins getting it back, and it's tipped in over the line. Schmelik catches up with it. Taylor gets slowed down by Zitnik. Schmelik around behind the net, sending it up to Barnes, but the pass went behind him. Sweeney at center ice gave it away to Barnes. Barnes steps in over the line. He guns it across. You know, tapping it in. Bubbles a play in behind the net. Sweeney takes a hit back there from Holzinger. He made out in front. Chris Barnes the shot. Well, we talked about the importance of a Buffalo forecheck. And right off the opening faceoff, the puck ends up in the Boston zone. Holzinger does a great job behind the net of taking Don Sweeney off the puck. And Buffalo sets up the scoring chance, Juno, to Stu Barnes. And a nice stop by the goaltender, Byron Defoe. And Holzinger, who made the play in the corner, did what he should have done. He went to the front of the net and almost jarred the puck loose. He did for an instant. And then the goaltender, Defoe, fell on it. Or Lindy Ruff, some changes in tonight's lineup. Uh, actually, one change. Dean Sylvester is playing. And that means that um, Michael Groshek is not. And Miroslav Chetan uh, still trying to come back from that finish. I hear the... Bruins coming up with it. Bork behind the net. Slips it up on the wing. Carter trying to get away from Brown. Then gave the puck up. Knocked back ahead to Brown again. Brown will chip it in over the line. Bork taking it back for the Bruins. Bork flings one off the glass to center ice. Warner knocks it down and chips it out to center again. Taken away by Carter. He can't get it there as he bumps with Rasmussen and they bump again. McKee's pass deflects off a skate and goes all the way down the ice, but it's going to be called on a delayed offside. Well, the Buffalo Sabres have started quickly in a number of games in this series. Going back to game two is Michael Pekka. That game uh, in Boston, Buffalo won that game, scored early. And in game three, Buffalo did it again. As Jason Woolley moved in from his point position to score, and then in game five, an early goal, power play goal by Curtis Brown, within the first two minutes of the hockey game, all three of those goals in those three games. Bruins will have to track this one down, and Ray Bork is the first one back after it. Just a little over a minute into game number six here at the Marine Midland Arena. Bork flings it up ahead through center ice. Missed everybody, but the Vino icing is Schmelick is back in there. Schmelick trying to poke it around on the board. Yeah, lost it. It came right beside the net again. Bruins keeping it in. Pekka took it away to Verada. He can't get it out. Held in with a quick shot by Wilson. And it spun off into the corner. Shifted going after it. He swings it ahead. Ward chipping it high through center ice and racing back after it. Verada on Gill. Is ruled as getting there first, and that will be an icing. Now, that's why Verada, there was some question uh, about whether he would play tonight. He didn't feel too good for the last couple of days, suffering from the flu. But he is in the lineup. Uh, Jason Woolley also. There was some question mark about whether he would play. Verada has had an outstanding season, even a plus rating in eight of nine playoff games. Buffalo. Uh, a little sloppy in their own zone just a couple of moments ago. They had a chance to clear the puck. Verada, he tried to make the pass to Dixon Ward instead of getting it out to the neutral zone. And Boston ended up with a shot on goal. So, you know, the, uh, you, do you not want to turn the puck over in the neutral zone and at the Boston blue line? But, of course, also in your own end. That could be very damaging. Taylor is out between Samsonoff and DeMaio now. You know. Doesn't win the draw. Taylor does to Bork, getting it to DeMaio. Took his shot. That's cleared away by Hatchet to the corner. Woolley spinning it ahead to Sylvester. He'll get it to Primo. Primo galloping in over the Boston line. Shot deflected around behind the net. Primo jumps on it back and the pull the same. The rebound. The pull got it again. Oh, and it shot just wide of the net. Patrick moves up to hold it in there. He goes down. Sabres keeping it in. Around to Sylvester. 
Sylvester behind the goal. Sylvester got away. Got it up ahead. It's knocked down to the boards. Willie keeping it in. Works it into Sylvester again. Back to Cruz with a shot. He fired it wide. Willie jumps up into the play. Sending it around to Sylvester. Looking in front of the net. Oh, and it deflects just wide. Willie charging after it again. Here's Willie for Sylvester. Sylvester trying to work it around. Still with the puck. Trying to flip it in front. And the Bruins finally fire it off the boards and down. It's going just wide of the net. Patrick back after it. That's icing against Boston. Tremendous pressure by Buffalo. And there we see one of the advantages in this series. The depth of the Buffalo Sabres. The Boston Bruins uh, have played three lines throughout this series. And that was their third line on the ice. The same line that started the game. But Lindy Ruff went with Buffalo's so-called fourth line with Dean Sylvester. He has had an outstanding playoff series in the American Hockey League with nine goals in eight games. And along with Primo and Paul Cruz, they did a wonderful job of forechecking Boston in the zone. So the depth of Buffalo certainly coming into play already in this game. Sweeney catching up with the puck. He'll flip it off the glass and that one will go out of play. And this matchup that we have seen for most of the series we're seeing again it's Michael Pekka at center along with Murata and Dixon Ward against Jason Allison Dimitri Kristich and Landon Wilson now in game five in Boston Buffalo got behind in the game and Lindy Ruff forgot about the matchup in other words uh, he was trying to score some goals and really didn't bother too much for the second half of that game but we're going to see it all night tonight I'm sure Allison tips this one to the corner. Gill will drill it around on the boards, and that goes down the ice, and as Zipnik goes back to get it once more, Boston is going to be called here for icing. Now, one thing uh, Pat Burns will do is bring a smile to your face. Uh, I was down in the Boston corridor after the last game and listening to Pat Burns' press conference, and I couldn't believe it. Uh, about the last five minutes, he spent just teeing off on the referees. And he was, I guess the only way to describe it was whining. That's what he was doing. And he, he was saying that Buffalo gets all the breaks, they get all the calls. Michael Pekka, he said, goes out there and can almost commit murder on the ice and doesn't get called for it. And it went on and on and on. And I really couldn't believe it because here his club has just played a heck of a game against... Oh, Pekka tried to get a shot on there. I hear where you're coming from, but don't you think maybe he was trying to pre-sell game number six? Oh, probably. <laughs> and I just thought it was quite unusual. Uh, he just, uh, he went into a tirade. Pekka to bring it out now for Buffalo. Gets to the Bruin line. He'll slide it in. And behind that, Defoe flips it around on the board. Schmelich unable to keep it in. Pekka going back after it again. Pekka pulling away from his check. Trying to pass through the middle. That didn't work out. He picked it out of the air. Christich comes up with it. He gets halted by Schmelich. Zipnik coming up with it now. Watched by Allison. Worked it up on the boards. And it's slapped right into the Buffalo bench. 16-26 to go here in the opening period. Neither team has been able to get on the scoreboard yet in game number six. 16 minutes, 26 sec seconds remaining here in this opening period. We've had four shots on goal, two apiece with a faceoff here in the middle of the ice in the Buffalo zone. Bruins keeping it in, spinning it over to McLaren, trying to work it down low. He flipped it in front of the net. That's knocked down, and it jammed ahead for Rasmussen. Rasmussen away to center. Hitting the Boston line and over. Rasmussen squeezed one through. Defoe kicks it away. Kept in by Brown. Twists it around on the boards. Sanderson trying to come up with it now. Brown gets involved as well. Holding it in there. Sanderson digging at it once again. Kicked back into the corner by Warner. Bruins recover and work it to Hines. He's tied up. But Sweeney carries on. Sweeney winging one across to McLaren. McLaren will flip it in. Brown bounces off him. McKee swings it around for Rasmussen. He tried to spear it out of there. Can't do it. Bruins keeping it in. Put back into the corner. Carter gets taken out. It's flipped off the boards and deflected at the center. And away goes Rasmussen. Hines trying to catch up with him. Hines grabbed Rasmussen. No penalty there. And it's fired right back down the ice. And the Sabres are hollering now as Rasmussen and Hines were going at it in behind the play. Well, let's go down now to Danny Gare. Well, thanks, Rick. Lindy Ruff this morning at the morning press conference was asked, despite losing game five, is this team still confident? 
And he said, this is what you play all year for, 82 games in the regular season, to have an opportunity to decide a playoff series at home. They have not lost at home all these playoffs. What more could a player ask for? And they have come out strong here early in this first. Upstairs to you guys. Well, and Buffalo has another thing going for them uh, here tonight against Boston. The Bruins have not been very good in this building. One win, eight losses, and one tie, including the two playoff games this year. And they have been outscored 38 to 19. Holzinger getting it back to Barnes. Barnes turning around on his knees now, feeding it off into the corner. You know, charging in there. You know, keeping it in. Third it in front of the net. Back into the corner. Willie got grabbed. A penalty coming up to Bates. Bates is going to get the first penalty of the game. Now he's going to argue, but he had a hold of Jason Willie's stick. One thing the Bruins are doing well here in the early going, and they have to do this. The Boston forwards in the Boston zone are really watching the Buffalo defense close. And they're moving right on top of the Sabre defense as Buffalo have been pinching in uh, continually from the blue line. And Bates grabs the stick of Jason Woolley, who ended up in the corner to the right of the goaltender. And the first penalty goes to Boston. As I was mentioning earlier, Jason Woolley, there was... Some speculation about whether he would play tonight. Uh, he did not complete game five in Boston because of a groin problem. And here he is. Uh, he actually went to see his doctor at Michigan, Michigan. State yep. University. Uh, that's where he played uh, college hockey. And I guess this doctor has helped him before. It actually, it helped him earlier in the year. And it helped him again this time. He didn't drop the puck fairly here, so they're going to try it again. And a second one off the clock, and uh oh, here we go. They're going to put the second back on the clock again. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> maybe, we, we Bill, do have some, maybe they've mastered please, it by now. Please, Bill McCurry, just say, just hold the clock for one second and then start it. We've been through this before. It took about five minutes until they... Got the correct time back up on the board. Well, uh, unless they're not allowed to do that, partner. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But whatever. They got it up now. At least they got the penalty time up right. Now the main clock reads 15.09. I think it should say 15.10 remaining in the period. <laughs> now the... There we go. All right. All right. Drop the puck. Drop the puck. Let's there. go. Now the Buffalo Sabres, the only NHL team in this year's playoffs to have scored a power play goal in each of their playoff games. Up and up, holding it in. Zitnik swings it into the corner to Pekka. Pekka rolling around, holding it in there. Here's Pekka at the top of the circle. Pekka looking across ice to Woolley. Woolley takes a shot to puck it into the corner to Pekka. Pekka got it back to the point. Look back in along the boards again to Judo know to Pekka. Pekka hanging on to it along the wall. Pekka trying to set it up. Takes a shot. job by Curtis Brown standing in front of the goaltender and he had a huge part in this goal tying up a Boston defense and the record continues for Buffalo here in the playoffs as they have scored yet another power play goal it was a beautiful setup play and Pekka just wound up from the top of the circle Curtis Brown in position in front of the net on Kyle McLaren and maybe the puck was deflected not sure. Perhaps Curtis deflected that, but it's one nothing. A power play goal by Buffalo. And here's Woolley inside his own line. Swings it up on the wing. It's deflected in right to Defoe. They chip it in the corner to McLaren. McLaren gets chipped in there by Primo. Primo trying to pry it free. He's got the puck. Gets knocked down by McLaren. It ends up behind the net. Picked up by the Bruins. And Cruz took a run at him. And then Cruz got chopped by Sweeney. And it's fed down the ice. Woolley fetches it in the corner. This is icing coming up against Boston. Now Buffalo coming out, charging here in this building, scoring the first goal of the hockey game as Pekka scores on the power play. And he just continues to excel for Buffalo. But Paul Cruz, moments ago, taking a run at Belanger. 
Michael Pekka, how important is he to Buffalo? Well, in seven wins in this year's playoffs, Pekka has 10 points. The two games that Buffalo have lost, no points. And he will take this draw to the left of the Boston goaltender. And it's tipped back right through the middle. Schmelich will charge back after it, being watched by Wilson. Schmelich in the first couple of goals, he lined him up. Around it goes for Zipnik. Zipnik swings it out to center to Verada. Verada tipping it in and racing in after it along with Ward. And Verada took a run at Ward can be high the net. It's back there now. Ward can't get it. Flipped up ahead and set out through center. Zipnik catching up with it again. Across to Zipnik. Zipnik ripping it right back in again. The full holds it there, gets it around on the glass, does not get it out. Ward keeping it in, knocks it back into the corner. And it slipped around, kept in by Pekka. Pekka getting it back to the point, shoots like a shot, and he fired it wide. Wilson chips it high in the air and gets it to center. Bruins bringing it back again, in over the line. Christich left it there, and it's broken up, and away goes Pekka. Pekka fires a long one, Defoe knocks it away, the rebound to Pekka. There's another whack at it, and Bork got it away, but not out. Chitnik took a shot, that's knocked out. Center ice, Allison carrying on. Allison getting in over the line. He gets checked. Taken back by McKee. McKee rolling out of his own zone. Works it out to Rasmussen as he bumps off Commander at center ice. And it's flipped right back in over the Buffalo line. Hashett giving it to Warner. Warner into the corner to McKee. Seven minutes into the opening period. one nothing Buffalo. Fine. Slipping it back, Commander getting it ahead. That'll be deflected across ice to pan him. Asmussen took a run at him. Commander's got it again. He sees it up on the wing. Taken away by Warner. Warner for Asmussen. Has to wait for his teammates to get onside. Now he'll flip it in. The pull has an attack there. Brown went firing in, but Van Imp comes up with it. A pass on the wing to Carter. Carter gets pounded by McKay right at center ice. Hashik flings it around on the board. Carter can't keep it in. Buffalo starting back again. Away is Sanderson. Sanderson into Boston territory. Got it back to Rasmussen. Rasmussen going wide the shot. But it's deflected and goes to the corner. Sabres trying to keep it in, but it's punched out to center ice. Kick back now to Sanderson and cold on the offside. Almost eight minutes gone here in the opening period. Buffalo has the lead by one. Here's Woolley firing one in around behind the Boston net. It's jammed back in the other direction. Tipped up on the wing, not out. Kept in by Buffalo again. Woolley still battling for the puck and taken away at center by Holzinger. Holzinger cruising around at his own blue line to Patrick. Patrick trying to work it ahead. Can't do it. Gets it back again to Woolley. Woolley for Patrick. Up on the wing, but that's going to be a two-line pass to Barnes and clearly an offside. Sabres season tickets are on sale now, and if you call in right now and secure your season tickets with a 10% non-refundable deposit, you'll be able to purchase third and fourth round playoff tickets before they go on sale to the general public. Representatives are standing by right now to take your calls. 855-4444 extension 82. Best seats, best prices, best of everything. Buffalo Sabres season tickets. So far, mission accomplished from Buffalo's point of view. They wanted to start quickly. They certainly have done that. They wanted to score first. They have done that. They wanted to shoot the puck in better into the Boston zone. They've done that. Here's a long shot that gets knocked down by Woolley, and it's fed ahead to Holzinger. Holzinger flipping it off the boards, taken back by Samsonov. He was a real force for the Bruins on Sunday afternoon. Bruins trying to come away again. Taylor left it there. He goes after it again. Bumping with Woolley. Chipped ahead. Taken back by the Sabres. Holzinger gets checked. And he picked it up again. Holzinger finally finds the handball and gets it ahead to Barnes. Barnes coming to the Boston line and over. Barnes trying to slide it through to Patrick, but it's ripped off the glass and out to center ice again. Holzinger could have run it. His man sends it off. Zitnik working it up on the wing to Barnes. Buffalo making a change. Tap back to Zitnik once again. Rolls it up through center ice. Pekka could not catch up with it. Then Pekka bumps with Sweeney. Flipped into the corner to Zitnik. He'll get it along the boards. Ward doesn't get it out. Boston keeping it in. Got back in beside the net. Here are the Bruins trying to put on the pressure. Around behind the net. Put right out in front. That's knocked down. Bork after it again. Bork holding it in. He fired it in front. Allison didn't get a shot away and a penalty coming up here to Buffalo. I think it's going to Alex Zipnik. Uh, that happened in front of Dominic Kashik to the left. Again, the 
Sabres. The puck came up along the left wing boards, and Dmitry Kristic of Boston made an excellent play to prevent Dixon Ward from clearing the puck out of the zone. And that allowed Boston to generate a forecheck, and eventually Zipnik takes a holding the stick penalty at 9.27, and so the Bruins will try on the power play. And it happened in front of the net on Axelson, and it was momentary, the holding the stick, but it was enough to draw the attention of the referee. And the face-off inside the circle to the left of Dominic Asik. The Bruins with just two shots on goal. Buffalo with seven. And the Sabres have scored, of course, on their only power play. Now Boston gets its first opportunity. With ten and a half to go here in this opening period of game number six. Boston power play not very good on the road just slightly over 9% Buffalo's penalty killing the best in the league 95% Berlin's will have to chase back after this one to get going Kimmender picking it up He'll feed it up ahead and it's taken by Kristich into the line to Thornton Put around behind the net Junot prize it free here's Junot swinging out of his own end Junot gets ahead of steam up Hits the Boston line and over. Juno took the long shot. They both cleared it to the corner. Buffalo making a change. Oh, what a play by Juno. I mean, that started back behind Dominic Ashik. And he skated the puck right down the ice. And then a half remaining in the penalty. Timmender comes to center ice again. This time he'll send it in around on the board. Boyd can't catch up with it. It goes all the way down the ice. Timmender has to hustle back after it as Holzinger takes a bead on him. Leaving it to the captain, Raymond Bork. Bork sliding away to center, got it over on the wing. Bruins bringing it in and taking it down low as Allison. He gets knocked down, got it in front. But the Sabres break it up, and away goes Brown for Holzinger. Holzinger in over the line, picked his shot. Holzinger now slides it around into the corner again. Less than a minute remaining in the penalty. Buffalo changing quickly. Thornton starting back. His pass through the middle. Taken away by Schmelich. Schmelich ripped it off the boards and out to center ice. Holzinger scooped it, but couldn't get it any farther. And it ends up behind the Buffalo net. Action for Patrick. Patrick around on the glass and down the ice. Well, that's how you shoot it out of the zone. Uh, everything he had, James Patrick slapped the puck down the ice. You want to make absolutely sure on a play like that, and James did. And if coming to center, he'll slide one into the corner. It, but didn't get it out of there. Now Warner takes out his check. Warner gets it off the glass and clears the zone. 15 seconds to go in the Bruin power play. Searching after it is Barnes. It ends up at center ice. Tapped back in again. McLaren got it to Carter. Carter works it to Samsonov. Back to Carter again. In for Samsonov too far. Samsonov falls. Buffalo back at full strength. But comes to center. Three on two. Shipnick getting out of the box. Here's the shot. And Sanderson fired it over top of the net. Sanderson trying to catch up with it. And if knocks it away, and it's punched high in the air to center. Verona taking it back. Verona trying to pull away and does to Sanderson. Slips it in over the line. Kept in by Buffalo on the back pass. Comes back to Pekka. Pekka feeds it in. Never got to Sanderson. Bruins. Thornton starting away. Thornton gets it to center. Checked by Pekka. It's slow across ice. Sabres are in the midst of a chain. McLaren for Sweeney. Sweeney dropping it off. McLaren to Thornton, and Thornton sails one in wide of the Buffalo net. Zipnik taking it back, trying to pull away from Carter, getting it up to Verada. Verada leaving it to Schmelich. Now to Pekka. Two Bruins collide at center ice, and there's going to be a penalty called against Sylvester. He pleads his innocence, but Boston is going to go on its second consecutive power play, trailing by one. Boston right back in the power play. Dean Sylvester is called for interference. And it was really an unfortunate play for Sylvester as he inadvertently ran into Jason Allison at the Buffalo Blue Line, but it was a penalty. It was an interference penalty and well called by the referee. And the Sabres now have killed 16 straight power play opportunities, and out of that they come up one ahead on the shorthanded goal that Michael Pecka scored in this building. Zipnik will just sail it down the ice and Defoe will slow it down and give it to Boyd. Seven and a half to go here in the opening period. 
Hillander hitting the Buffalo line. He taps it in. Hashik tried to pick it out of the air. Rolls to the corner. Brown picking at the block. Carter gets it ball. Brown goes down. Kept in by Boston. Back to Bork. Bork doesn't shoot. Still has the puck. Now he lets it go. Hashik steered that one away. Schmelich trying to come up with the Bruins. Keeping it in there. Came in front. Hines scores. Hines on the power play. And the Bruins have tied the game at one. Now that was a shot Dominic Hashik should have stopped. The puck went beef. Between the legs of the Buffalo goaltender. And it was not an angle shot. Hines was standing about five feet off the crease and just gunned the puck along the ice. Through the stick of Dominic Hasek and into the net. And the Bruins have tied it on the power play. I did it difficult to say. It might have gone between his legs. But the Boston Bruins have tied the score. Uh, looking at it again on the replay, I think it went on the short side, just be, between his left skate and the goalpost. So that was a shot that Dominic usually makes the save on. Well, that took some steam out of this sold out crowd for the moment at least. Clipping it high in the air. So a power play goal by both clubs. He tried to feed it ahead. The referee McCreary gets hit. It's dumped up to Sylvester. He chips a backhand in. The foe comes out to play it on the board. Sylvester can't keep it in this time. Axelson to center. Axelson dribbles one off into the corner. Wilson charging after it. Got away from Rasmussen's check. McKee gets taken out by Thornton. Warner flips it up ahead. Left it sideways now to Rasmussen. Rasmussen got it to the Boston line. Taken away from him. And it's gone right back off the corner glass. McLaren going after it. Came to the blue line. Kept in momentarily by Buffalo. Now to center to Axelson. He'll fire a long one in. Hashik handling that and giving it to Warner. Warner up on the wing for Sylvester. Sylvester flipped it ahead. Knocked out at center ice. Bruins getting it back. Taylor for Bork. Bork takes a look and works it back through the middle to Samsonov. Samsonov leaving it there. Bork has to charge after the puck. Bork feeding it high in the air and that ends up in the Buffalo bench. Now, Steve Hines has scored two power play goals uh, in this series, and both have come in this building. Ray Bork, uh, I'm sure tonight will play over 30 minutes for the Boston Bruins. Just a remarkable player. And the Sabres, as I mentioned, have targeted Bork throughout this series. But Hines scores a power play goal to tie it for the Bruins after Pekka scored a power play goal to give Buffalo the 1-0 lead. With 5.58 remaining here in this opening period it's important for buffalo now to see how they react after that boston goal uh, they had all the momentum going and they have to get charged up again and get a four check going in the boston zone and offside right at the boston blue line with 548 to go here in this opening period well i was sort of wondering when uh, pat burns was going to do this he's put samsonov back on the line with allison and kristich samsonov uh, played a great game in boston he was boston's best forward uh, i think uh, samsonov and pat burns have butted heads all season samsonov didn't play much in games one and two and didn't even dress for game three is that what happened to pat's hair Maybe that's the the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he tore some of it out too. Looking up right at center. He's picked up by Allison. He'll spin it around behind the net. Schmelich leading it for Murata. They can't get it out. Challenged by Gill. Hooked off the boards again. Kept in there by Samsonov. Samsonov doesn't shoot. Back to Bork. His boom shot finds the glass. Tipped around on the boards again. Bruins keeping it in. Samsonov slipping it back to Bork. He flipped it in wide of the net. Down by Zitnik. Zitnik hooking it ahead to Verada to Pekka. Pekka with a bouncing puck. Hits the Boston line and over to Ward. And down goes Ward as he's nailed by Bork. And it's cold anyway on the offside. And now some pushing and shoving going on. And some late hits now. And the officials may have their hands full here. I can't believe they called that offside. I, I did not think that the play was offside, but after the whistle, Dixon Ward got flattened by Ray Bork, and the Buffalo players did not like that and got involved, and I think we're going to have at least one penalty coming up here as Bill McCreary skates to the penalty box. And there's a the roughing call that's going against Buffalo. 
I think. Jitnik. Uh, Jitnik is going to the box uh, earlier in the shift. Uh, Jason Allison hit Václav Verata with an elbow. Boy, I, that's a tough one. I'm not so sure I understand this call. Somebody was throwing a couple of punches while the players were gathered near the Boston bench. I think it was Hal Gill, and he ends up with nothing. And now the Sabres have taken three straight penalties. And a faceoff coming up outside the Boston blue line. Buffalo, Buffalo scored first, and the Bruins tied it. But Dixon Ward got knocked down. Zipnik came in and knocked Jason Allison on the seat of his pants, and perhaps that's well, the penalty was called, but I thought there should have also been a Boston player who went to the box. The last time Boston had the man advantage, they connected. And they'll jam it into the Buffalo corner now. Killinger goes down. McKee, they come up with the puck, can't do it. Bruins keeping it in. Now it's whipped around and taken by Holzinger, and he'll flip it high in the air and down the ice. Work back after it, swinging it off the boards. Cross ice pass to Hines, who has the Bruins marker. Look back in the other direction. A minute and a half to go on the penalty. Holzinger runs Timmender. Set to Thornton, stepping into Buffalo territory. Got it across in front of the net. It rolls wide of the net. McKee drilling it back down the ice. The foe slowing it down behind the goal. Both teams making a change. Thornton. Starting away. Four minutes to go here in the opening period. 1 1. Flipped around. Judel will try to come up with the puck behind the net. Patrick helps him out. Schmelick gets involved. It's tipped around on the boards now. Pekka flipped it. Didn't get it out, but Patrick does. He'll send it down the ice. Less than a minute remaining in the Zipnik penalty. McLaren after it. Gets it up on the wing to Samsonov. Samsonov scoots one in over the line. Ellison getting it back now. Here's McClure in the shot. Blocked in front of the net. Patrick got it down the ice again. And Buffalo completing a change. Defoe swings it to McLaren. He'll whip it ahead to Samsonov too far. Warner bumping in there with mistakes. They go to the wall together. Samsonov trying to come up with it. Tied up by Ward around behind the net and bobbled up now by Barnes. 15 seconds to go on the penalty. Barnes sends it down to Ward and over the line. Ward spun it in front of the net and Barnes couldn't pick it out of the air as he lost his stick. And Ward went head hunting and missed Christich. Samson off the long shot. Hashik knocks that one down and sends it off the boards. And it's drilled by Warner down the ice. And Buffalo's back at full strength. Work coming up with it again to Taylor. Taylor as far as center. Nailed by Primo. Brought in by DeMaio. He gets knocked down. It's rolled into the corner. Axelson takes a bump in there. Primo comes up with the puck. Working it around on the boards. Shipnick gets all tied up by Axelson. They finally get disengaged. Here it is in over the line. Sanderson and Brafold is sending him on the score. play by Jeff Sanderson again Sanderson skating with reckless abandon in this hockey game goes coast to coast and Primo ends up scoring on the loose puck in front of the net but Sanderson with blinding speed as he started from the corner to the left of Hashik weaved his way through the neutral zone went between the Boston defense and Primo, who followed up on the play, beat Byron Defoe, and the Sabres have the lead yet another time. What a tremendous effort by Jeff Sanderson. And did, Primo has his second goal in as many games. What did the Sandman have the Jets on? Whoa. Here's Zitna grilling one in wide of the net. Defoe will leave it back there to McLaren. McLaren ringing it up ahead. Picked up by Thornton coming to center. Primo chopping away at him. And it's taken in over the line, broken up by the Sabres, right, right back again. Sylvester at center ice, Cruz, the long shot, and he hammered it wide. Set around into the corner, swing after it, and Sylvester tags him in the corner. Now the Bruins coming up with it again, Thornton's pass to center. Wilson will fire it off into the corner. Schmelich there first for Buffalo. Schmelich hooks it to Sylvester, tried to tip it to center ice. Wilson stepped into Sylvester, and they exchange hacks. Here's Sylvester in for it again, taking a 
bump and knocked down by Belanger. Belanger just got away from Packers check. Gill trying to carry on. Gill to the Buffalo line. He rolls one in wide of the net. Packer going after it for the Sabres. Pulls away from one by getting it to center. Gill slipping it back for Bork. Bork swings a pass off Samsonov's leg. McKee across to Warner. Warner flipping it around behind the net. McKee's got time to make the play up the middle to Pekka. Pekka got it back again. Trying to get it to Ward. It went around behind the Boston net. Ward that slowed down. Got it to Verona. Here's Verona right in front of the Ward. Couldn't pick it up. Bruins starting back. Tipped by Gill to center ice. Gill coming through the middle. McKee just missed him. Gill carries on. Nice touch by Gill. Flipped in front of the net again. Samson can't get it. Let's That's go around to the boys. He couldn't get it to Ward. Less than a minute remaining in the period. Ward, Pekka just kicks it away to center ice. Bruins trying to come up with it again. Allison steps in over the line. He got turned around and put himself offside. Less than a minute to go here in the first. Buffalo back in front by one. 47 seconds left here in this first period. Sabres up 2-1. Coming on our first intermission. I'll talk to Jeff Sanderson. We'll go back to the Empire Studios. And Rick and Jim will have their analysis on this first. Up to you, boys. Now Jeff Sanderson made the play and Wayne Primo finished it off. As Sanderson went end to end. Second effort in front of the goaltender is what caused Defoe to get tied up uh, and turned. And Primo quickly fired the puck into the empty net. McLaren now sending one around behind the Buffalo goal. Kick back in the corner to Thornton. Jam along the board. Brown brings it around behind the net to Sanderson. Sanderson challenged by Carter in the corner. They all kick at the puck. Carter holding it in, though, getting it into Thornton. Tried to work it back to Carter. 20 seconds remaining in the period. Thornton in the corner, tied up by Woolley. They battle along the wall. Brown trying to hook it free. Down goes Thornton. Puck is still underneath them in there, and they're still shoveling away. Now it goes in behind the net. Brown trying to tie up his check in right beside the net again. Back it comes to Sweeney. He took a shot. That's knocked out right in front of the net. Ends up rolling to the corner. Patrick works it around. Sanderson comes up with it. Puts it back in the other direction in the first carry of this history. And a pretty good one for Buffalo. As Michael Pekka opens the scoring on the power play, the Bruins then tied it, but Wayne Primo gave Buffalo the lead. Dominic Hasek, uh, not uh, overly busy in that opening period. Certainly the Sabres... Uh, the more active hockey club against the Bruins. And we'll check our Toyota statistics after 20 minutes here at the Marine Midland Arena. Shots on goal, 10 for Buffalo. The Bruins with seven. Boston with an edge in faceoffs, 13 to 9 in the scoring chances. Eight for the Buffalo Sabres and three for the Boston Bruins. And of course, if a seventh game is necessary in this series, it would be played Thursday night back at the Fleet Center in Boston. Due to popular demand, the Crossroads Pub is now open during both intermissions and two hours prior to face-off. Crossroads Pub, it's located in the pavilion-level party room here in the Marine Midland Arena. The Crossroads Pub, everybody is welcome in the Crossroads Pub. And I mentioned that the next game in the series would be, if necessary, would be played Thursday night at the Fleet Center in Boston. That, of course, uh, would decide the series one way or another because that would be game number seven. And the only way that could come about is if Boston should win this hockey game tonight. And, of course, uh, we know who the winner of the series will meet, uh, the Toronto Maple yep. Leafs. Last night, in overtime, eliminated the Pittsburgh Penguins and a goal by Gary Volk. So uh, we're not really sure when that series will begin, but we do know it will be Toronto. And let's go downstairs to Danny Gare. Oh, thanks, Jim. I'm here with Jeff Sanderson. And Jeff, the hockey club wanted to have a good start. You did do that. You came out with a lot of speed and a lot of good forecheck. Yeah, we know this is, you know, this is the last game we want to play in this series. Um, we don't want to be going back to Boston. So we're basically leaving it all on the ice here. And we got off to a good start in the first period, got the lead going into the second here so it's just all positive right now for us let's talk about the the second goal how important that was to come back after they get a power play goal and you made a great play uh, moving that puck with your speed to the neutral zone and preems happen to follow it up well their power play's been so good they came out with another power play goal to answer our first goal and um you know when i just came down the ice there after the next shift everything just kind of opened up for me and um, I didn't think I had a chance of beating Bork. I thought I'd just get it in his skates and try to get around him, and the puck just kind of bounced through and went in, and uh, I kind of stabbed at it, but Preems came up behind and put it in the net. 
Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Tickets. Rick, up to you. So the Buffalo Sabres score the first goal of this hockey game on the power play, only to have Boston come back and tie it up with a power play goal to their end. But then the Sabres get the one before the period comes to an end and regain the lead after one here in Buffalo. Welcome back to the Marine Midland Arena. Buffalo with a 2-1 lead. One of our keys tonight uh, was for Buffalo to dump the puck intelligently into the Boston zone. Well, they dumped it in 10 times. They carried it in five times. And they turned the puck over the neutral zone five times. So not bad. Over the 10 times that they shot the puck in, six times they gained control of it. With the center ice taken back by the Bruins again. Christich getting it to Samsonov. Samsonov trying to go wide. Gets checked. Murata squeezed it out to center. Gill is there to slam it right back in. Round to the boards. Allison holding it in. Allison chips it into the corner. Here's Samson off turning again. He left it there and it's cleared away. Worked ahead to Ward. Ward getting it back to Pekka. He tried to shovel it ahead. Knocked down by Bork's glove and Shipnik feeding a bouncer. And Defoe had to be careful and cover up on that one. Uh, we, we've seen some... Uh handy flip shots in this series that have caused nightmares for the goaltenders and that was another one. Oh, well, at least Lord Byron didn't try to use his head. Oh, well, <laughs> right, Dominic used his head to headbutt the puck into the Boston crowd on Sunday afternoon. We've been talking about dump in so and Michael Peck had a chance to get the puck deep and ended up giving it away to the defenseman and this is what you don't want to see happen when the Sabres attempt to shoot it in. It was batted down by Ray Bork. If you're going to shoot it in uh, or dump it in, you have to make certain that it goes by the defense. Sweeney around behind the loop. Almost gave it away to Sanderson, but he got it around to Carter, and Carter hooks it high in the air through center. A key watched by Thornton to Warner. Warner squeezes it out through center ice and back after it, McLaren. Brown chasing after him, fed off the boards. Bruins coming up with it again. Sweeney gets kicked by Sanderson, though. Sanderson bumping with Sweeney along the wall. Carter taken out by Brown. Kicked into Rasmussen. Rasmussen got it in front. They shut the CB radios that one home. Curtis Brown on a nifty pass from Rasmussen. And it's 3-1 to Buffalo. And the Buffalo pressure again on the Boston defense. Sweeney... Ended up turning the puck over after Buffalo forechecked him, and Curtis Brown scores a huge goal to give Buffalo a two-goal lead. But a scrum along the boards, and Buffalo wins the battle. What a play by Rasmussen to move to the front of the net. The goaltender, Defoe, overcommits himself, and Curtis Brown steps around the Boston defender, Steve Hines, and slips it into the net. Timmender working it across to Van Ip to center ice. He flipped it, and that ends up in the timekeeper's bench area. Well, Eric Rasmussen uh, played very well this series, and he is rewarded with an assist and an excellent play. Jeff Sanderson was also involved in that up along the boards. It was Sanderson who forced the play on Sweeney, and Curtis Brown finished it off in front of the net. And from Buffalo's point of view, now is not the time to say, well, we've got a two-goal lead. Let's play defense. They have to continue to be aggressive against Boston. The time here now is Woolley is back there. Watched by Taylor. Woolley slides it off. Patrick hooks it off the boards to the blue line. Not out. Bruins keeping it in. Now DeMaio loses control, and it's tapped out through center. And it back after it being... Tracked by Junot, taken away by Holzinger, darts in over the line. Here's Holzinger taking the shot, and Defoe has to be careful of that on the short side. I, I just start throwing everything at Defoe. He is not sharp tonight. And that's, uh, I think, exactly what was on the mind of the Buffalo Sabres' Brian Holzinger as he fired it from a bad angle. And the save was made by the goaltender, but he wasn't quite sure where the puck was, Defoe. I wasn't sure whether he had bobbled it or dropped it, but he held on, and the faceoff will be to his left with 18-17 to go here in the second period. 3-1, Buffalo. Sweeney back comes. A 
It's knocked down at the blue line, kept in by Schnellick. Here's Schnellick taking his shot right on to pull the save, swept away by McLaren. Belange getting tied up in there along with Sylvester. Cruz comes over as well. They're still kicking at the puck. Belange and Sylvester get a thing going, and they're still going at it. And Cruz gets involved. Belange is going to the penalty box, and he has really hurt Boston throughout this series. He's another player that Pat Burns was whining about. That every time he steps on the ice, the referees are looking for him. But when you do that, when you get your stick up and cross check, it's no wonder you end up in the penalty box. And that happened up along the boards in the Boston zone. And Belanger got a stick up into the face of Dean Sylvester. And Sylvester just laughed at Belanger. And Buffalo with a power play here. Boy, if they ever pop another one. It could be curtains for Boston. And it might get ugly. Yes, that too. This series has been on the edge. Uh, not so much in game one, but it began in game two and it has carried right through this series. Bork comes up with it first of all and whips one. Uh, that'll make it down the ice. Shitnik going back to pick it off. Just underway, second period. 3 1 Buffalo Sabres on the power play. Shitnik hanging center. Now he busts one in off the glass in the corner. Skipped around to the boards. Pekka trying to hold it in there. Some help from Junot who falls and it's tipped down the ice. Covered by Brown. Back for Woolley. Jason Woolley takes a peek and gains center again. Hits the Boston line. Trying to hit Brown with a pass, but it ends up in the corner on Taylor's stick. He got it around to the boards, and he makes it all the way down the ice. So far, Buffalo hasn't been able to get anything going here with a man advantage. 110 left in the penalty. Three minutes into the second period. Zitnik lugging the mail again, comes to center with a pass into Holzinger. Holzinger works it down low, spins around in the corner. He'll drop it off back there to Sanderson to Holzinger. Gives it to Sanderson once more. Sanderson got it into Holzinger, deflected it back into the corner again. Gill trying to catch up with it, can't come up with the clock. Kept in by Buffalo, now it's knocked down. The Bruins get back and shove it around to Bork. Bork gets time, uses the glass off Schmelik to center ice. 35 seconds to go on the penalty. Shipnick's pass is going to go all the way down to Defoe. He'll give it to Bork. Bork brings it, doesn't get it out. Primo keeping it in, and he gave it away to Bork, and Bork just sends it down the ice again. 25 seconds to go on the power play, and McKee is back to gather it in for Buffalo. Time for one more rush. He's sensing that comes to center and rips one in around on the boards. Kept in by Holzinger, spins it back in again. McLaren knocked it free, picked up by Christich, and he shovels it ahead to the blue line, and Christich comes away. Here's Christich getting it over the line. Boston back at full strength. The front, sweeping back in, and he shot it wide. Warner takes it away and gets it around to McKee. McKee flipping it up ahead, deflected by Barnes through center ice. It's dumped out to center once again, drilled across through the middle. Boston Samsonov comes up with the puck. Samsonov for McLaren. Going to get it back to Samsonov. Broken up by McKee for Barada. In for Ward. Too far. Sweeney takes it away. In the corner to McLaren. And Barada went tumbling into him. Allison starting back. Allison hitting the button alarm. Put his shot. Hashik makes the save and hangs on to that. And Allison and Zitnik. But they separate on their own almost five minutes into the second period. The Bruins come close, but it remains 3-1 Buffalo. We now move ahead in the action. Now, Michael Pekka, as we get ready to start this third period, has just been great again tonight for Buffalo. He's been 18 shifts, uh, played almost 14 minutes. He has four shots on goal and one goal. And just as important as that, he's kept Jason Allison very quiet once again. The goaltenders, Dominic Ashik, uh, 11 stops tonight. And Byron DeFool with... They've got Byron at 14, but I believe they... Uh, 14 saves, 14. 17 shots. Right? It, okay. And the puck goes into the crowd right off the get-go here, five seconds into the third period. 
And Buffalo starting with Pekka at center with Verada and Dixon Ward. Jason Allison, Landon Wilson, and Dimitri Kristich. So Pat Burns, uh, that experiment with Samsonov back on, on this line didn't last for long, but quite frankly, uh, I think that's where Samsonov ought to be, particularly when Boston needs a couple of goals to get back in this game. Is, whoops, going to hang on to the puck. What he was thinking of there. And he had plenty of time to yeah. make a decision and do something with it because it was a long shot. I guess Dominic uh, wasn't sure where his players were on the ice and didn't want to take or didn't want to gamble on the play. So he held on, and that's the right thing to do. And they'll drop the puck to the left of the Buffalo goaltender. Now, Jason Allison on faceoffs has been incredible tonight over two periods. 12 wins, only five losses. This one is kick free. Wilson got it to Bork. That's knocked down. Ward got it out to center, and Bork took him down. Now Bork swirling around at center ice, being watched by Verada. Feeds it up on the wing. Ward broke it up. Verada got it in over the line. Bork takes it back. Bork working it to Wilson. Wilson hitting the Buffalo line, the long shot. Hashik steers out of way. Here's Christich trying to keep it in there. And that one bounces up. Schmelich can go out of play, and let's go now to Danny Gare. Well, Rick talked with associate coach Don Lever as the team came onto the ice for the third period, and he said what they want to do is just keep it real simple here in the third period. They want to keep their shorts very shift. They feel that this arena is very warm tonight. They also want to have a few more reverses by their defense. They feel they're using the wall or the boards too much. They want to reverse the puck and change the flow against this Bruin team. Lots of confidence coming onto this ice. Upstairs to you guys. Face off now between Thornton and Brown. Deep in Buffalo territory. Just underway in the third period. And the linesman Lazarowicz. Some words of advice for the two faceoff principals. Brown winning the draw to Warner. Warner around on the boards, feeds it off the glass through center. It's knocked down by McLaren. He'll guide it ahead, taken back by Warner. Eases it to Boston's blue line. Sweeney getting it back. Sweeney works it to center. Now flipped up ahead. Hines can't get anywhere. The Sabres recover again to Patrick to Warner. Warner getting it off the boards to center, taken back by Carter. Across to Sweeney. Sweeney's pass to Carter again. In over the line. Throws a shot and misses. Round of the boards it goes. Brown hacked it to the blue line. Did not get it out. Boston keeping it in. Brown with another whack at it that's finally chipped to center ice. McLaren swings it over to Sweeney. He'll sail one off into the Buffalo corner. Warner coming up with it. Up on the wing, Rasmussen. He flex off him into Boston territory. They'll call this one icing. Uh, kids, uh, I'd like to invite you to join me in August for Jim Lorenz Hockey Programs. And we do have some openings in some of our programs, uh, such as the advanced program, the girls only, beginners. And for more information in our brochure, call 874-6133. That's the number at the North Buffalo Community Center, and we'll send it out immediately. Buffalo, you can see here in the early going, a little bit uptight. Uh, they've made some bad passes, some bad decisions, and that's not unusual in a game like this when you're ahead. And Tim Under is checked by Barnes. He didn't see the puck. No, he picks it up in over the line. And Stu Barnes very nearly got away. It got to center. Bruins coming back again. Left for Axelson. He gave it away to Woolley. Woolley swings as far as his own blue line. Can't get any farther. Poked off the boards again and jammed in right onto Zipnik's stick. Zipnik rolls it around and it ends up at center ice to Timmender. Two minutes into the third period. Timmender for Taylor. Taylor trying to get around Woolley and slowed him down. Juno pumping in the corner with Tamayo. It's drilled around the boards. Not out. That bounces high in the air. Knocked down and away goes Juno. Juno swinging in over the line with Pekka. Juno goes down into the corner. Got it back. Barnes fanned on it. Came to the blue line. Out back in again outside. 17-32 remaining here in regulation. Buffalo leading 3-1. to one. Tonight's Xerox Fast Fact tells us for the first time since 1986, all four of the second round NHL playoff series have gone to at least six games. 
one thing you can see that's different about Boston, we I noticed it back in the second. Their defense is becoming much more aggressive. They're pinching in at the Buffalo line, pinching in, in the neutral zone, and of course, uh, when you need some goals to get back in the game, that's not unusual. However, they're not very experienced at doing that because Pat Burns basically hasn't played a conservative game. Here's Gill giving it away at center ace to Ward. Ward in over the line. Back for Pekka walking in the shot. Oh, makes the save. Wilson comes up with it now for Boston. Wilson's pass through the middle. Carrying on is Christich getting it over the line. He rolled it in front. Wilson brings it wide on the short side. Pekka trying to slip it out of there. Gets it up on the wing to center ice. Gill knocks it away from Verada. Wilson has it again. Buffalo starting to make some changes. Wilson will scoop one in. Hashik is out and knock it down in the corner. Wheel it around behind the net. Sanderson starting back. Sanderson hits center ice. Trying to pull away. Can't do it. But now in over the line. Sylvester with a backhand. Dribbled it wide of the net. Taken back by Sweeney. He's hit by Primo. And it's worked ahead to Hines. Hines starting to center ice. Sanderson takes it away from him. Three and a half gone by here in the third period. Long pass. Sweeney leaps up to pick it out of the air. And it's knocked back in over the line and recovered by Boston. Not out. Patrick holding it in. Patrick works it back into Sanderson. Sanderson, primo! And it's kicked off into the corner by Defoe. Chopped around to the board. Buffalo was in the midst of a change. Carter bringing it back. Carter into the Buffalo zone. Trying to get around Woolley. Woolley squeezes him behind the net. Shipnick joins the fray. Kicked around on the boards. And it's taken by Woolley. Woolley now will swing around in his own end. Use the glass to send it through center and into the Boston zone. Field ahead to center ace for Thornton. Thornton challenged by Warner. And finally gives it away. Holzinger coming back. He'll roll one in. Dillinger chasing after it in the corner. As you know, trying to catch up with him. Worked around for DeMaio, but it hit the referee. DeMaio finally coming up with the puck. He dribbled it to the blue line and out to center ice. Boston trying to get away. Knocked down right at center ice. And Timmender flipped the long one in wide of the net. Hashik hooks it off the boards in the corner. Taken away by Buffalo's Holzinger. Holzinger drilling a pass to center for Juno. Fires it in wide of the net. Barnes leaving it to Holzinger. Around behind the net. Taken up by Taylor. Here's Barnes trying to come up with a puck. Barnes spinning around in the corner. Still has it. Barnes around behind the net. it up and clear it out to center. Back comes Samsonov. Samsonov in over the line. Samsonov. Oh, he's all tied up by Schmelik, who did a great job on him. Now it's spun off the boards into Boston territory. Pekka racing after it. He rolled it in. The goal left it there for Bork. Slipped around to the boards all the way to center ice, and a penalty is going to come up here to Buffalo. Schmelik will go for taking down Samsonov. Partner, we lost an old friend yesterday, Dick Ruff, a director of Niagara Frontier Hockey, passed away, and our condolences to the Ruff family, and you know, if you asked anybody who knew Dick uh, what they thought of him, I think to a person they would say, what a nice man, and he was, and we will miss him. We sure will, and Mr. Love, when he used to join us on the road trips, yeah, and we a have a great time with him, uh, it was a lot to sit down and talk to him. Well, the penalty is to Richard Schmelick for interference, and this is huge for Boston. Uh, they need a goal here to get back in the game, and there's still plenty of time with 14-29 showing on the clock. And Buffalo's penalty killing has been superb in this series, and they need one now. Bruins holding it in, however, and into Christie. Left it for Allison behind the net. He'll roll it back. Now it's come to cross to Bork. Bork holding it in to Christie in the corner. Back for Bork again. He took a shot. He left it just wide of the net by Samson off. Allison swings it around on the boards. McLaren getting it back to Bork. Bork works it to Christie. Takes a shot. And that one makes its way into the crowd. And let's go now to Danny Gare. Well, thanks, Rick. I'm here with Ford Miroslav Shatan and Miro with 14.05 here. You're up two goals. Thoughts of maybe Toronto in the next series, but let's talk a little bit about where your condition is as far as your ankle is right now. Uh, doctors told me it's going to be probably a couple more days, and um, hopefully, I've heard it a couple of times during this injury, so I don't want to get too excited, but uh, hopefully this time they're going to be right, and hopefully 
sometimes on a weekend I can be back on the ice. So you'll be back skating on the ice now. What about your conditioning? Is there anything you've been doing riding the bike, or, or is there anything you're doing to help that? I couldn't ride the bike a lot, but uh, I was uh, I was doing inside pool exercises. So that's just about it. Thanks, Meryl. Guys. Well, the Bruins still with the man advantage. A minute and a half left in the Schmelich penalty. It's tapped back into the corner. Allison behind the net. Hit the back of the net. Plays it to himself. Taken away by Pekka. Round on the board. Fork holds it in. Fork puts it to the other side. It's deflected into the corner. As McLaren let it go. And recovered by Buffalo and swung all the way down to Defoe. Peck is the first one back after it. Flipped up ahead to McLaren. McLaren guiding it across the board. Pekka watching him. Now Allison. A minute left in the power play for the Bruins. Worked over to McLaren. McLaren. Cross ice pass. Brought in over the line. Patrick knocks it down in the corner. Patrick banking it off the board. Picked up by Brown. And he wheels it down the ice. 45 seconds remaining in the penalty as Bork was challenged by Holzinger. Ray Bork's got it again. Comes away through center ice, works it in over the wing. Woolley breaks it up and he smokes it right back once it comes. Boy, just great positioning here by Buffalo on this penalty kill. And the Bruins, when they do get it in the zone, cannot uh, set it up. Three seconds remaining now. It's fired in around behind the Buffalo net. Shit is going after it. Well, that should have been icing, and it is. I didn't hear the whistle go, but it is an icing call against Boston. Now, Danny Gare just talked to Miroslav Shatan. It's been a long time for Miroslav Shatan. Let's go back to that Ottawa series. And Shatan just happened to be in the way of a Alex Zipnik shot. Hit him on the right heel or the right ankle. And Shatan went down and hasn't been back since. And boy, I mean, we've seen him hobbling around. And I mean, he did just barely get around on, on that foot. Could put no weight on it at all. But... This morning we saw him. He was walking a little better, and as he indicated to Danny, perhaps uh, he can get back on skates in a day or two. Face off coming up here. Still Buffalo on this penalty kill with 16 seconds left in the penalty to Schmelich. Looked around behind the net by Barnes, but the Bruins, Timander, starting away. Cross ice pass, got it to center. Barnes broke it up. Here's Van Ip flipping it to an open wing, and the Sabres return to full strength. And it's the linesman right at center. Barnes picks it up, getting it to Schmelich out of the box. He'll rip it around behind the net. Tipped all the way around for DeMaio. DeMaio starting away to center ice. Got away from Sanderson. Drilled one in. Hashik missed that. It came around on the boards. Warner couldn't get it out. Kept in by Axelson. He fires it, and that ends up going back through center ice. Sanderson racing after it. So is Sweeney, who just gets there first. Sweeney bringing it away for Boston. Feathers a pass over to Axelson. Axelson took his shot, and Hashik kicks that away to Rasmussen. Rasmussen guiding it out to center to Primo, to Sanderson. Sanderson tapping one in. Primo trying to catch up with it. Defoe hooks it around to the boards. Got it to the blue line and out to Allison. Allison swings one into the corner. Hashik is well the net, and he chopped it but didn't get it out. Sweeney took the long shot. Hashik knocked that away. Bruins keeping it out. It's right in front of the net. Wooly catching up with it in the corner. Off the boards. Not out. Fort holding it in. His long shot is taken away. Cleared, but not out again. Sweeney kept it in there. Here's a quick shot by Wilson. Right on. Back to Fort. He fires one. Ward got in front of that one. And it's cleared back into the corner again. Boston putting on the pressure. Out in front of the net. Back to Sweeney again. Fort the screenshot. That one just went wide. Wooly trying to get it out of there. Challenged by Kristich. Wooly flips it and gets it to center. 11 minutes to go here in the third period. The best Boston pressure in quite some time. Go back into the corner, Shipnick catching up with it. Shipnick throws it around on the boards, didn't get it out. Came right in front of the net. Kicked in by Boston, backhand, Hashik the same. Here's Thornton going after it. He left it behind the net, and Pekka picks it off. Pekka banks it off the boards, out through center ice, and the Sabres make some much-needed changes. Ruins to Bork again, feeding it up the middle. Christich rolls it to Hines. That's broken up, but not out. Boston's Hines keeping it in. Hines around behind the net. Penalty coming up to Zitnik. And Boston pouring it on midway through this third period, trailing by two. Alex Zitnik is in the penalty box. As he tackled Steve Hines 
behind the Buffalo goaltender. And so the second consecutive power play for Boston coming up here for the faceoff to the right of Hashik. 10-27 remaining in regulation time. Buffalo 3, Boston 1. But in the last four minutes, the Bruins have been coming hard. And for the first time in the game, have managed a consistent forecheck against Buffalo. Bruins holding it in, tipped into the corner. Warner whacked out and didn't get it out. Now it's spun around on the board. Back to the point. Worked back into the corner to Thornton. Thornton got it around behind the net. Thornton after it again. Warner's on him. Allison spinning it back to Bork. Bork holding it in. Works it in to Allison. Right in front of the net. That's knocked down. Took it away in the corner by Juno. Can't get it out. Boston holding it in. Allison. Bork. One timer. Hashik's oh, got it one. That was a hard shot by Ray Bork, but an easy stop for Dominic Hashik. Boston, uh, good puck movement in the zone, but the Dominator saw the shot from Bork all the way. Juno tried to clear the puck. Uh, it was a touch pass to Bork, and Dominic Hashik, uh, he can shoot on Dominic from that place all day and he'll never score. No matter how hard you shoot it. And a faceoff here to the right of the Buffalo goaltender. 132 remaining in the penalty to Alex Zipnik. Bolzinger comes out along with Brown to do some penalty killing. We're halfway through the third period. Thornton winning the draw to Pork. Pork will slide it into Allison, getting it in front, and Hines sent it all the way back to center ice. Heminger charging back after it. He wheels it up to Hines. Hines across to Bork. Bork guides it into the corner. Schmelich and Thornton charging in there. Rolled around on the boards. Hines to Bork again. Across to Timmender. Timmender doesn't shoot. He clears it across ice to Thornton. Thornton keeping it in. He's checked by Schmelich. Schmelich trying to shovel it to Brinson. Can't do it. Finally sends it behind the net. Too far for Warner. Timmender keeping it in there. He out in front. Back it comes to Bork. Bork took a shot. He flicked it right off. an outstanding save he made on Hines but the first one was unbelievable the quick right pad of Hashik stopped a deflection that I thought was a sure goal the shot by Ray Bork kept it low was deflected about 15 feet in front of the net Hashik made the save and Hines could not score on the rebound two clutch stops by Dominic Hashik and you knew that sometime in this game he was going to have to turn in that kind of goaltending and he has here on this power play of Boston. 48 seconds remaining in the penalty to Alex Jitnik. Hashik now has nine shots on goal here in the third. Total of 21 overall. So, another face off. The Bruins are taking a lot of time here. And the reason is uh, Jason Allison and Ray Bork yeah. have been on the ice for this entire power play and will remain out there. They, Allison's just taking his time to get a breather and give Ray Bork a breather. He'll milk it for all it's worth. Barnes and Allison, the 241s, are in the faceoff area. Tipped in the circle. Rolls free to Patrick. Patrick swings at it, can't get it out. Bork keeping it in. That is checked. And here's Barnes. Oh, and he couldn't get it up the middle. He was trying to hit Ward with the pass. Ward came back to take out Bork, and it flipped down the ice. Half a minute remaining in Shipnick's penalty. Surrounds the puck and brings it right back again. Heading to center. Guiding it in over the line. Dropped off in front of the net. Knocked down but not out. And now a chance for Buffalo and rung right back down the ice by Patrick. 15 seconds to go in the penalty. Buffalo, a complete change. Christich starts away. Christich getting in over the line. Trying to work it down low. Nailed in there by Warner. It's jammed around to Simpson off. He'll tip it back. Here's McLaren keeping it in. Across now to Sweeney. Sweeney got it in down low to the corner. Flipped out in front. Sweeney shot knocked down a rebound. And it's cleared up the center as Zitnik returns. Worked across to Sweeney again. He guides it in to Christich. He's taken out on the wall. Samsonov takes a bump. Juno trying to get it. Bruins keeping it in. Worked across to Taylor. Taylor back to McLaren. Walking in with a shot. He fired it wide. Rebound hit the side of the net. Tip back into the corner. 
chucks it around on the boards. Sabres can't get it out. Sweeney pitching in, keeps it in there. In behind the net, Taylor is taken out by Schmelich. And now Buffalo with Pekka working it at center to Verano. Off his stick right to Sweeney. Less than eight to go here in the third period. Pekka getting it back again. Pekka throws it ahead. Sanderson trying to pull away. Defoe got it in behind the net. Almost got wiped out by Sanderson. Up on the wing, Axelson. Axelson wheeling one high in the air. Shipnick banks it off the boards to center. Van Imp after it. Sliding it to Axelson. He'll feed it ahead, but Shipnick is there to take it away. And work it across to Patrick. Patrick up for Primo. And over the line. Here's Sylvester shooting one right on. And Defoe's got that one trapped and he hangs on to it. 7.15 to go in the third. Buffalo leading by two. Just talk with head trainer Jim Pizzatelli about Jay McKee, who has not been on the ice here in the third period. He said he has a bit of a, a sore head. He got banged around a couple times in that second period and a little bit of a bell ringer. So one of the things that uh, Lenny Ruff has done for precautionary measures is kept him out for the third period and getting ready for this next series, hopefully, against Toronto. Upstairs to you guys. That's a wise decision. Anytime someone is hit in the head like that, uh, you don't want to take any unnecessary chances. There seems to be a hole in the Buffalo net, which would be fine with Dominic Hasek, but somebody, one of the linesmen spotted it. And of course, they'll always check it after there's a scrum behind the net, perhaps. Uh, it's easy for a skate blade to slice yeah. right through that heavy netting. And that's exactly, uh, I think, what happened and repairs uh, now by the linesman. Quality coverage you can depend on. Independent Health presents the save of the game, and it's Dominic Hashik earlier with Boston putting on the pressure on the power play. Hashik makes the save, and then he smothers the rebound. And that was Steve Hines uh, who had the opportunity. Steve Hines, the only Boston player to beat Dominic Hashik tonight. That was back in the opening period. Well, the net is repaired and the face off is at the opposite end to the left of Byron Defoe. 7.15 remaining in regulation. Buffalo 3, Boston 1. Thornton and Primo are going to take the draw. Primo got it back but if Miss Schmelich and goes all the way down the ice Hasek will slow it down for Richard Schmelich. Schmelich banking it around on the board. Sanderson chopped at it and that's going to end up going right out of play and Sanderson ends up Laying on his face. That's uh, such a tough play for a forward. Everyone in the rink knows that the play is going to come up along the left wing boards, and Sanderson handled that pretty well. And, and you know you're going to get hit. On, there's a defenseman coming at you, or a forward, or both, as in that case. And it was Anson Carter who ended up knocking Sanderson down to the ice. But the important part was he got the puck out of the zone, or at least uh, it ended up over the boards. Schmelik now will bring it out. Tipping it up through center. Oh, and Primo couldn't quite track that one down. Carter starting back. Carter gaining center ice. He's checked by Sylvester. Sylvester into Boston territory. The long shot. Defoe makes the save and swings it behind the net. Kevinder after it in the corner. Trying to get it out of there. Can't do it. But now to Van Imp. Van Imp slips it up to Hines. Hines drilling a pass in for Thornton too far. Goes behind the net. Woolley is there. That's icing against Boston. Six and a half to go here in the third period. When you want the latest news on your Buffalo Sabres, check out Fan TV. Weekdays at 4.30, weeknights at 9.30. Fan TV brings you everything you need to know from the world of sports right here on the Empire Sports Network. Uh, just watching Jason Woolley move in that last play, that was a key play for him to get back there and touch that puck for icing, and that has to tell me that his groin's feeling pretty good because he showed a, an excellent job of turning back and then hitting full stride to go back and touch up because he had Joe Thornton chasing him into the zone. Pekka went in the draw, getting it back. Warner flipped it in, but taken away by Gill to Bork. Bork dribbled it out to center ice. Shipnik gets knocked down, and here's Allison coming in with a shot. And Hashik makes the save. Spun around on the boards. Wilson blasts one way wide. Cleared around to the other side. Gill gets labeled by Barada. Bruins holding it in. Shipnik cruising around behind the net. Shakes off a slash from Landon Wilson and gets it to center. 
Bork taking it back to Gill on the other side. Six minutes to go in the third period. Schmelich kicks it ahead to Pekka. Pekka will flip it through center. Bork picked it out of the air. Ward comes up with it. Bork gets it back again. Buffalo changing. Over to Gill. Gill drilling one in. That finds the glass. Ends up in the corner. DeMaio after it. He's taken out in there by Schmelich. Rolled around behind the net, and the Sabres just clear it out to center ice again. Sweeney back there. Sweeney to Taylor. He'll work it across ice. Packs back to Don Sweeney. Leaving it for McLaren. Getting it up on the wing. Too far for Axelson. Tipped in the other direction. But this is going to make it down the ice. And this is going to be a faceoff back in the Buffalo end. Make the right decision. Insist on Karuba collision. And Eric Rasmussen catches Steve Hines just inside the blue line. That was one of many hits tonight for Eric Rasmussen. He has played a very strong game for Buffalo. The Sabres just trying to check the Bruins here on the third and maintain this 3-1 lead. So far, they've been successful with 5-22 remaining in regulation. And a faceoff coming up here to the right of Dominic Hasek. And I think the fans here at the Marine Midland Arena are sensing, sensing that Buffalo a short distance away from meeting the Toronto Maple Leafs, but not there yet. Rolled around on the boards now to the blue line, not out. That's knocked down. That's rolled out to center ice. Boston recovering and hammering it back in again. This time, Hashik will give it to Wally. Wally flings it around, trying to work it to Barnes. Spun off the boards, not out. Holzinger couldn't get it out of there. They battle again in the corner. Wally pumping with his check. Zitnik cries it free. Zitnik behind the net, rolling it up on the wing, and it's tapped out to center to Holzinger, and he tried to work it to Barnes. Holzinger has it again. He'll flip it in. Left in behind the net, less than five minutes remaining here in the third period. Bork is out on the ice again for Boston and takes the pass. He'll wheel it across to Carter at center. Carter gaining the Buffalo line and over into Thornton. Bumping with Rasmussen in the corner. Schmelich poking at the puck. Couldn't get it out of there. They battle on the wall. Warner tying up his check. Still battling for the puck. Is just lying there. Warner being worked over by Samsonov. Now it's Werner with it in his skates again. Rolls it back into the corner. Samsonov comes up with it. He tips it back in along the board. Sabres break it up. Sylvester can't get it out. Boston keeping it in. Now it's tipped through the middle. And this one will dribble its way right down to Defoe. Four minutes remaining in the third period. Defoe around to Van Imp. Leaving it back behind the net. Picked up by Bork. Getting it up on the wing. And that makes it way through center and all the way down the ice. And it's going to be a face-off back in the Boston end. Buffalo leading by two. And time is a-wasting. Now, Rob Ray uh, not playing uh, tonight for Buffalo, but he's about as close as you can get to the Buffalo bench. And you know where his heart is. <laughs> oh, yes. And even though he's not in uniform, uh, he's with his teammates every stride of the way. And Buffalo just three minutes, 47 seconds away from advancing into the conference finals against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Here's Pekka getting the draw back to Patrick. Put his shot, and Defoe knocks that away to Kristich. Kristich to center ice. Stolen back by Pekka, and he wheels it right back into Bruin territory. And Hip catches up with it. Around for Bork. Here comes Verona. And it's jammed around on the boards. Verona and Bork battling again. Verona knocks it free behind the net. Van Hip coming up with the puck. And Hip for Hines. Back to Van Hip again. Van Hip now wheels it out to center. Bruin starting away. Brought in over the line. Allison. Allison tried to scoop it through. Came in front of the net and chopped away by Patrick. Patrick helping it around on the boards. Ward gets knocked down. And Ward slides it to an open wing. Three minutes remaining in the third period. And it's flipped up in the air and rolled into the Boston zone. And this is going to result in a faceoff in Buffalo territory. And on the TV side, we would like to show some of the folks who make our day and make the productions that come your way throughout the year and almost 80 games that we televise and and we're proud to say that because of these folks the Buffalo Sabres telecasts on Empire are acknowledged to be among the finest in the National Hockey League and I don't think we can point out anybody in particular because we need them all it's a team effort and as you 
Now this, this salute group. them at home, will you please? Now this group here in Buffalo, all the technicians, uh, producer, directors, uh, tops in the National Hockey League, without question, right here in Buffalo. Schmelich getting it off the boards, but not out. Bruins keeping it in, battling it down low. It's tipped around into the corner again. Schmelich goes tumbling in there, still in behind the net. Try to knock it free. Schmelich after it again, worked it around in the boards. Bruins attempting to keep it in and do, knocking it into Carter. Carter battling for the puck. Back it comes keep it in close to center ice. Bork will spin it across to Sweeney. 2.25 remaining. Primo breaks it up at center. Try to chip it ahead. Does. Sweeney knocking it down and sails it back to Bork. Bruins have got to think about pulling their goaltender. They're down by two. Here's Holzinger gaining the line. Holzinger in over the line. Took his shot and fired it wide. Around it goes to Carter. Carter charging after it. Buffalo changing again. Two minutes remaining in the third period. Carter coming away. He'll swing one in. Hashik had it behind the net. Feeds it around on the boards. And it's not free. And the Sabres bring it out again. Pekka leading the rush. Trying to get it up to Verona. Broken up by McLaren, who sets the play. Hashik will get it back there to Shipnik. Shipnik off the boards to the blue line. Out back in again. Offside. Now, what has been impressive about this third period also for Buffalo, they have four shots on goal. But I would say about the 10-minute mark, the Boston Bruins started really charging and pressuring Buffalo in the zone. And since then, I don't think the Sabres have allowed a shot because the Bruins, uh, well, maybe one shot in the last seven or eight minutes. As we continue to indicate some of the crew who present Buffalo Sabres hockey all season and all playoff long. Hines at center ice now, rolled across to McLaren. McLaren sailing one into the corner, a minute and a half remaining. Here in the third period, Boston keeping it in, came in front of the net. Now, Defoe hits the defense, Boston net wide open, chipped in the air, not out, Bruins keep it in. That was taken away, here's Jitnik, he can't get it out. Patrick got it out to center and rolls it into Boston territory, Peckett charging after it, but McLaren gets there first, it's icing against Buffalo with 1.17 to go. And the Bruin net will remain empty. And Byron Defoe will take a seat. This is it for Boston. Trailing by 3-1 to one with 1 minute 17 seconds remaining. Also, tip our cap to the cameramen here mm -hmm. who have brought us some wonderful pictures throughout this season. And video take people or stage managers are on June McCarthy. Dimmick uh, with us in the booth here, and Jody Warner, who's been with Danny Gare all season. Well, they are whooping it up here in Buffalo. They sense the Toronto Maple Leafs being next on the horizon. But 117 to go, and the Bruins will let it all hang out now. This is it. This is their season right here. Joe Thornton will take the face off against Curtis Brown to the left of Dominic Hashik. And expect a furious assault here from Boston. They battle for it in the face off circle. Puck squirts free. And it's set off the boards, but too hard by Rasmussen. It goes down the ice and it's coming back for another face off. And that ain't up. Nine seconds on the clock. Well, I'll tell you, I'm looking at the bu Buffalo defense tonight. They have been great, but no finer than Rhett Warner and Richard Schmelich tonight. They have absolutely been huge for Buffalo. When you talk about trades in the NHL this year, that trade that brought Rhett Warner over to this Buffalo Hockey Club improved them immensely. That may have been the best trade of the season that Darcy Regeer mm -hmm. pulled off out of any trade that was made in the National Hockey League because Warner has just been a huge asset to this team and has solidified the Buffalo defense. And he's on the ice for this final or for this next faceoff. Rasmussen well, it's, uh, Verata is going to the bench and it will be Ward, Brown, Pekka up front. Now Curtis Brown to take the draw against Thornton. If Brown is tossed, Buffalo, the backup centerman, of course, and Michael Pekka to take the draw. 108 to go. The fans have been on their feet for the last five minutes. They don't drop the puck fairly, so they're going to do it again, but they're also going to have to put a second back on the clock. 
Well, the puck was never dropped by the linesman. This this crowd is getting all pumped up, and <laughs> they get all these false starts. <laughs> well, okay, they've got 108 on the clock. Nobody's going home. They're all here. Oh. <laughs> 18,595. Joe Thornton again leans in. Curtis Brown leans in for Buffalo. Kept in the circle. Comes back. Kim under winds up. Takes a shot. They score! Boston deflected in front of the net. Whoa, don't go anywhere yet. Still 103 on the clock. Now, Boston winning the faceoff. Back to the point. The puck was deflected about 20 feet in front of Dominic Hasek. We're not sure who deflected it. But the Bruins still have some breath in them. Great job by draw by Thornton. And the shot was perfectly placed in front of the net. It might have been Landon Wilson who tipped the puck by Dominic Hashett. I think it was. The next was Thornton. Thing. Was it Thornton? I believe so. Now the Bruins have their second of the night, and it's a one-goal lead for Buffalo with 103 remaining in regulation time. And the goaltender, Byron Defoe, is back in the net, but he's halfway to the blue line. On the faceoff, Bork comes up with it, and the Bruins' net is open again. Shot down over the Buffalo line. Thornton Vaughn shot clear for the cutter. Thornton goes after it again, rolls it around behind the net. 51 seconds remaining. Back to Bork. He gave it away. Here's Peck in the center. Fires it. Oh, he shot it wide. Ward charging after it. Can't get there in time. It's icing Buffalo. Now, you don't want to ice the puck from there. Michael Pekka could have made sure he got to center ice. And he had Dixon Ward on the left wing. He had Verrata on the right wing. And Pekka shot it from his side of center. And Dixon Ward could not get there in time. But Ray Bork fanned in the shot at the blue line. And Pekka had time to either make a play or gain the blue line or gain the center ice line. Now, that's was a play that I'm sure Pekka will not make again. Now, 45 seconds to go. Keep in mind, neither team, to my knowledge, has called a timeout yet. We've had some delays, but I don't That's believe... Him. Well, again, he's going to call yeah. a timeout now, is he? Yeah, I think yes, so. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Pat Burns, so it's Boston's timeout. All right, 45.1 seconds to go. The Bruins already have scored a goal here off a of face-off. And they'll try to set up another play. And Joe Thornton, they've got two excellent face-off guys in there. Uh, Allison has been great tonight uh, on face-offs. Joe Thornton also pretty good. And Thornton was a guy who won it. Uh, Boston ended up with their second goal of the night as Thornton tipped the shot by Dominic Ashik. And the only time the Buffalo Sabres have defeated the Boston Bruins was in April 24th in 1993. And Brad May, the famous Mayday goal to beat the, the goaltender, and Buffalo eliminated the Bruins. And Terry Gregson's right in the Boston team meeting trying to break it up now. Interesting here. Andy Ruff had Curtis Brown take the first face off. Brown ended up losing it. Now he has Pekka out there to take the draw. Brown is not on the ice. It's Pekka, Verada, and Ward. And Allison, who has beaten Pekka most of tonight, will take the draw. Although Pekka won a couple of big draws earlier. And the Sabres pick it up, and it's flipped off the boards. This one won't make it for icing. 40 seconds to go. Kimminger back to pick it up again. Over to Borg. Borg takes a look and guns it across ice. Broken up by Buffalo. Jam back at center ice. Kimminger comes up with it again. He flips it in over the line. That's knocked down by Zitnik. Zitnik guiding it ahead. Ward flips it in over the line. 20 seconds remaining. Across to Wilson. Wilson high in the air. Into the Buffalo zone. Oh, McLaren charged after it, but he's way offside. The Sabres clear the zone to center ice. Timmonders can't get it. Fired in. Fired to the net by Pekka. And the Bruins pick it up. Five seconds remaining. Bork's long shot. Right in over the line. The heck at it again. Up to center. Bring on Toronto. 1.7 seconds remaining. And the faceoff outside the Buffalo line.
must have been called a, on the offside. Well, you sure as heck never hear it in this building. <laughs> no, <I'll tell> <laughs> I, I have never heard this building as loud as it is here tonight. Yeah, well, wait till the next series. Oh. <laughs> Won't that be something? Now, the Buffalo Sabres will meet the Toronto Maple Leafs in the conference finals. The Sabres won the season series three games to two. The last 17 games against the Leafs, Buffalo 10, 3, and 4. Sabres outscored the Leafs 17 to 10. And they've never met in the playoffs. Huh. Is that going to be something or what? They just added a couple of seconds to the clock. Three and a half seconds remain. But. I think as far as Buffalo is concerned and Boston, the most important part is the face-off is outside the Buffalo blue line. And Terry Gregson, there's some debris on the ice. Not very much, but there's some out there, and Gregson says, never mind it. Let's just drop the puck. Now, a lot of it's uh, down near the Buffalo goal also, and of course, oh, the, the Boston goal, right. Or the Boston goal, and the face-off is outside the Buffalo blue line. So it's well out of the play area, and with three and a half seconds to go, they're not likely to get down there anyway. So Pekka and Thornton will take this face off. They chop at the puck. It's knocked down at the line. A long shot from Sanders. This game is over. And the Eastern now. Oh, here's Thornton going after Ward after the game was long after. But the linesman got in there quickly. And that is the end of that. And the Buffalo Sabres will move to the Eastern Conference Finals for the second year in a row. This time against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Well, the fact of this series was this. Buffalo is a better hockey club than the Boston Bruins. And the Sabres eliminate the Bruins in six games. Boston did not have the depth that the Buffalo Sabres had. They were basically a three-line team. They did not have the physical president presence of the Buffalo Club, and they did not have the Buffalo coaching staff because Lindy Ruff, along with assistants Don Lever and Mike Ramsey, did an absolutely outstanding job of preparing this club against Boston and also, of course, against the Ottawa Senators and making adjustments as the series went along. And now the well, the ceremony that's really unique to hockey and in sports i was going to say professional sports really at any level and that is the shaking of hands at the end of a long series it's always at the end of any series but the longer ones and bitter ones make this moment a little bit more special particularly for the victorious teams and for this victorious teams i am here to tell you the playoff tickets for round three go on sale tomorrow morning at nine o'clock for tickets visit fantastics at any top friendly market locations or the marine midland arena box office or by calling 1-888-223-6000 tickets go on sale nine o'clock tomorrow morning for ticket limit per customer well, some huge games tonight from buffalo uh, jeff sanderson was great and the two defensemen i mentioned earlier uh, Rhett Warner and Richard Schmelich were just outstanding tonight. Ray Bork and Joe Juno, uh, two players who have opposed each other in this league for many seasons, uh, shaking hands and having a word. Uh, Ray Bork having a word also with Dominic Kashik. And I think Kenny Gare has got somebody with him downstairs. Yeah, guys, I'm here with Michael Peck. And Michael, after losing game five, you said you had a lot of confidence coming back here for game six. You certainly showed it here tonight. You're a whole hockey club. Yeah, we did. We came out and got the first goal again, which was really important, but we didn't sit on it. We continued to press and, and get a few more goals, and you know, it was great to win. A little disappointed myself, uh, allowing them to get one more face-off back in our end, but I bared down, won the draw, and you know, we held them off. How important was it for you to play such a strong defensive game, especially when Boston came on in the third period? Well, it was really important, but I think you know, what you saw is us getting a little bit of penalty trouble again, allowed them to gain some momentum, and you know, we did a pretty good job killing it off, and you know, until the end there, they had a... Uh, uh, some good pressure on us, but we held them off. Like I said, it's going to be going to the final, uh, conference final. Looking forward to playing Toronto? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, me and Jason Willie will be coming here soon. Uh, we're really looking forward to it. Being from Toronto and getting an opportunity to, to play to advance to the Stanley Cup is exciting, especially doing it uh, back home. Well, let's talk to Jason Willie. Jason, you had an outstanding series. Thank you, Michael. You and Mr. Zitnik were led the team in scoring in this series, but uh, you, you have to feel good about this one. Uh, this is a big win for us. Uh, you know, we played a heck of a team here, but they, and they just didn't want to quit. Uh, I give them a lot of credit. Uh, 
Uh, Don played well down the stretch, and, uh, you know, we locked up a little defensively. Uh, you know, and it's tough not to because you want to hold on, and I, I think you can see that happening, but uh, we got the win. Jason, special teams are always so important come playoff time. The power play goal in every one of your uh, playoff games, and, and your penalty killing was sharp also. Well, it really meant everything to us. Um, there's a lot of games if we didn't score in the power play, we weren't going to win those games. Uh, we knew it was going to be important. Uh, there's a lot of luck involved, but at the same time, we're doing all the right things. You're looking forward to Toronto. I know you're from that area. I must be looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that, that a lot, but it's going to cost me a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jason. All right, Dominic Hasek, the winning goaltender again. Dominic, first of all, how did you feel tonight? It must have felt good. Was the groin bothering you at all? Uh, not too much. I like, I like every other game. And my teammates, they play great. You know, I mean, we were a better team, you know, and, and uh, what can I say? Like, we deserve to win. We are better from the beginning to the end. When you look at this team, the Boston Bruins, uh, they came on in the third period. Was there any concern by your part at all? Yeah, they try, you know, they, they, they play hard, but I think they had only one, two really big chances in the third period. You know, we play really well defensively until last minute of the game when we somebody deflected a puck in front of me and I was a little bit frozen and then it was a little bit disappointed me this goal, but like I said, everybody did a great job and we are in the next round. Looking forward to Toronto? Yeah, of course, I'm looking forward. I think they are even more talented team, so it's going to be another big battle. Thanks, Dominic. Congratulations. Up to you guys. Well, I want to remind everybody again that even though we will not be able to televise, and this is our last televised show of the year, from now on it will be radio only, but we do want to remind folks that pregame and postgame shows will be on Empire as long as the Buffalo Sabres remain in the Stanley Cup playoffs. We've got more coming up in a moment. The Buffalo Sabres advance with a win over the Boston Bruins.